Torres del Paine, located over on Chilean side, this national park is probably the most famous part of Patagonia and easily its main symbol. And it really isn't that surprising, with its magnificent mountains, ice blue lakes, glaciers and beautiful wildlife. It's an absolutely astonishing place. And of course we couldn't just leave Patagonia without spending at least a few days there. Hey guys and welcome to Torres del Paine, world famous Chilean part of Patagonia. We're finally here, finally arrived and finally ready to explore the park. I'm super excited about it because it's just such a beautiful place. Now my initial idea for this video was to just show some of the most beautiful places in the park that you can self-drive to but there are so many beautiful places here in Torres del Paine that you just film each one of them and it really quickly becomes just a collection of moments and time which are great to experience when you're there but don't really make for a video with a great compelling story so what I'm going to do instead is going to take you with me on this hike that goes to the viewpoint towards Cuernos, those famous cliffs in the shape of the horns. Really a simple hike, one hour there and another hour back. Nearly no elevation gain, super easy. So I'm going to take you with me, show you the some of the photos that I'm going to be making and uh, yeah, just talk a little bit about my experience here in Torres del Paine so far. The hike to Mirador Cuernos begins at the end of road Y158, just past the Pudedo Catamaran station, and it won't take you long to get to the first major viewpoint. After only 10 minutes of hiking you will find yourself at Mirador Salto Grande, an overlook offering a fantastic view to the waterfall down below. And while I wouldn't exactly call it an ideal photography location, as you can't really go past the observation platform, it is still a very impressive sight. But don't worry, there is an incredible photography location just around the corner. Continue the hike for another 10 minutes and you will soon enter a field of dead trees. With so many trees to choose from and queerness serving as a perfect background to the image, this is literally a photographer's playground. So when photographing these trees, the main thing is to find a proper composition because there are hundreds of trees over here and it's easy to sort of get lost or try and run around and photograph everything. I suggest actually walking around for a while and trying different angles, trying different things, trying different shapes and forms. It's just a matter of finding your own. There is really no prescribed recipe here. Lots of options to choose from. For example, for me, I really found this one tree really appealing because it's formed sort of a semicircle that surrounds the mountain from the bottom. And with Cuernos above it, I think it really makes for a nice photo.
It is often the case that the journey is more important than the destination. And this definitely holds true for the hike to Mirador Cuernos. There's beautiful locations all along the way, so keep your camera ready. I especially recommend the shore of Lake Nordenskjold, shortly before the last section of the hike. With all the branches floating in the water, there's plenty of compositions to be found here. As you reach the final viewpoint, you'll be rewarded with an incredible view of the Cuernos right there in front of you. But while seeing them from this close is no doubt impressive, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this particular spot for photography. Instead, simply take a break, relax and just enjoy this amazing view. an impressive sight there on the overlook just watching the choir and it was really impressive but I actually wanted to return and photograph some of the trees if I still have some light available we'll see about that but while I'm going just one last thing that I wanted to mention here is that in Torres del Paine the weather can go from sunny and clear to rainy windy and freezing in a matter of minutes and you never know what's gonna happen next. And that really is something to keep in mind both as a photographer and simply a person exploring the park. Because for photography, you just can't rely on anything uh, being there the way you want, if you, if you know what I mean. Like if you have a, some sort of image in mind that you've seen somewhere online, you can't really just go to that spot and try to replicate it because conditions will be different and so my best advice really is to try and forget everything you've seen just explore the park and watch with your own eyes follow the light try to you know work your own magic if you like i actually captured a couple today uh, i'm going to show them in a second a along by the way with uh, with a few images I took yesterday and the day before that I didn't really film, but I still think are pretty cool. And then, if you're not a photographer or just exploring the park, it is really important to keep it in mind and dress accordingly, because you're gonna be hot, and then you're gonna be cold, and then you're gonna be hot again. And if you don't dress accordingly in layers that you can take off and put back on, you're in trouble because you're gonna be sweating, you're gonna be freezing, and you're just gonna be miserable all the time. So proper clothing, really important. Queerness really look beautiful right now. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Hope you got something useful out of it. I know it's been a bit of a hectic one, but that's in the end of the day how the park is and how it feels. So hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate a like. Also, subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Leave me a comment or a question. If you have any, I'll be happy to chat. And I'll see you guys in the next one. This is a good day as any To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many when the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin